This is Twit. Today we're talking about high frequency and high frequency mobile antennas use a coil so that a 20 meter whip is not a quarter wavelength physically long, but it is shortened via the coil. And you've probably seen this coil. This is the Hustler coil that we use for loading a mobile whip on a single band to have it resonant. And the larger the coil, excuse me, the larger it's something I ate, the larger the coil, the higher the Q, the lower the losses, but uh, it becomes quite band restrictive as to how far that antenna will work uh, outside of uh, where you've set it, mobile. Well, now let's talk about base station. And one of the most popular antennas comes from DX Engineering, and it's the five band trap vertical, as well as they sell the very popular Cushcraft A3 and A4. These are multi-band antennas, and the way multi-band antennas work is, yeah, they've got a coil that we see here, but it's part of what we call a trap. And the trap assembly is a coil surrounded by an outside conductor tube that adds capacitance. And traps, as soon as inductive capacitance, inductive reactance meets capacitive reactance, we have resonance. So let's take a look at uh, a typical antenna and see what might work. And as Tim says, K3LR, the trap antenna is one of the most popular out there. Now, of course, uh, Tim and his team, uh, Rod, WNAR, and Parky, W, correction, KB8UUZ, they would much rather have a multi-band uh, antenna be a single band because that's where the efficiency is. But let's take a look and see what a multi-band antenna might look like. And there's my tower, and we've got the six meter on top, and that is the multi-band antenna just um, uh, below it. And uh, the multi-band antenna has traps, and you see those traps as uh, the little bulges in there. And if we take a close look at uh, how a trap works, we'll see that on 10 meters, the signal goes out just far enough to the first trap at 10. The energy circulates within that trap and doesn't go any further. 15 meters goes through the 10 trap to the 15 trap and circulates around and doesn't go any further. And the 20 meter goes all the way out to the end, but we have a 40 meter add-on kit, so we add one additional trap. Normally, traps do their thing, and they uh, vertically or horizontally uh, keep the energy going where it should be. Here we see a trap uh, antenna for 10 meters at the very bottom trap, and then 15 meters, and then 20 meters, and then 40 meters, and then way up at the top, a series circuit, a resonator for 75 and 80 meters. This is a very popular five-band trap vertical uh, from Hustler that DX Engineering sells a ton of because they have such a great ground system. Let's take a close look at these traps. We were having a problem with the 15-meter trap. Now, the first trap, that's the 10 meter, but the one right next to it is 15 meters. And what was happening, it was intermittent. And that is as the wind was blowing and the driven element moved up and down just a little bit, we began to have a little bit of a problem with that second trap, the 15 meter trap. Well, what the heck can go wrong with a trap? A trap is a coil of wire. Well, first of all, we take a look at a very common problem, and that is where the coax joins the antenna system. No, this was not part of mine, but uh, as you can see, that's a pretty ugly connection. So if I had an intermittent problem, I'd probably first start looking here. Beyond the coax connection, we then take a close look and see how the antenna traps are placed onto the elements. <clears throat> And uh, as we uh, look at the uh, elements, and uh, they'll be up here in uh, just a second. Come on, elements. And uh, we're sending our code. To, there we go. Uh, that is uh, the trap that is uh, suspect. But here is where a problem can occur, and that is where the elements slide together. Unless you use the conductive grease that comes with the antenna, and they say use this grease uh, a whole bunch, uh, it can develop corrosion. Well, we checked this one out, and it was clean as a whistle as soon as we unloosened that hose clamp, but we were still having problems with a trap. Well, what the heck can go wrong with a trap? 
Uh, I'm holding on to the outside X of C, capacitive reactance, uh, and that capacitive reactance sleeve covers the internal coil. We always want to make sure that the holes that uh, may uh, uh, allow moisture to drip out are facing down. Gravity rules. Okay, the holes are facing down. The trap antenna is still intermittent at the 15-meter band, which is our second trap. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. Well, we can take the trap apart gingerly, and when we do, we see that as soon as we remove the capacitive cover that is attached to one or both ends electrically, we then see the internal um, windings. These windings look clean as a whistle, but this was a brand new one that uh, failed out of the box. This was about a three-year-old uh, project, so it didn't happen just recently, but it is one where uh, the trap was no good. Well, let's take a look at uh, what we just found out with the latest one. Same trap, but on the other side, what can go wrong with this? We see the left side and the right side. Uh, looks like it is uh, a, um, a good connection there. But as soon as we checked it out with an ohm meter, guess what? We found out that there was no connection between the wire and the aluminum uh, via this um, uh, connection right here. And the reason probably was they didn't scrape off enough of the shellac to make a good connection. And just the movement of the trap up and down was causing this to be a bad connection. And uh, we want to thank uh, Rod WN8R and Parky KB8UUZ under Tim K3LR DX Engineering's direction for uh, guiding us to what could be the problem. And sure enough, this uh, three-year-old antenna, that was the problem. So if you've got a trap antenna, then uh, if it's working fine, then don't do a thing. Just make sure that uh, the little drain holes are indeed pointed down. Marvel at the antenna. Remember that first trap out is the 10 meter trap. The second one is 15, the third one uh, 20 meters. And uh, if uh, the antenna is misbehaving on a single band, Probably it is the internal coil on one of those traps because the outside capacitive sleeve may be terminated well to each of the elements, both sides. So that's causing the signal to go through that what would be a bad trap for just that particular band. Yet all the other bands seem to work out fine as the case here. So thanks for taking a look at trap antennas. And um, I think that's our last shot. And... Uh, the antennas are uh, terrific, but one of the best things about the trap antenna was the capability to uh, be able to uh, contact uh, DX Engineering and have them immediately uh, say, let me get to our technical crew, and uh, they certainly did. A couple last uh, items, uh, Dan Perry, KK4UOK, a brand new Ham Nation viewer. Uh, welcome aboard. And uh, last week when we showed some of those specific on uh, uh, HamCon uh, show uh, photos, we want to thank Pete Harris, KE6ZIW. He came through with a bunch of them for Ham Nation, and we'll be showing additional ones uh, shortly. So that's your lesson about antenna traps. Remember, the holes need to go down. This is the outside slip that may or may not be terminated to both sides, but at least one side providing the capacity X sub C and the internal is the coil. And what went wrong with mine twice in a row, a uh, three-year-old antenna was at a bad connection was at the coil. And it was resolved by simply uh, loosening things up, scrubbing the heck out of it, making a new connection, didn't need a new trap and we're ready to go.